Hello and welcome to another episode of Aim Down Sights, the show that, yes, is exclusively about Call of Duty. The intro is a dead giveaway. I'm failed hipster jerk Dan Ma here to... Hang on, have you let the YouTube commenters edit the script again? Typical. Anyway, this week I'm joined by pro COD player Mark Bryceland, or Marky B, who's trekked all the way from Glasgow to join us in our London studio. Mark, thanks so much for making that trip over. Um, for the benefit of the viewers who might not know who you are, can you just tell us a little about yourself? Hey, I'm Marky B, as you just introduced me, and I play for TCM Gaming, one of the leading organisations and esports teams in the UK. We're currently renowned as one of the best teams in the UK, and we're uh, currently practising to compete at G93. Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Mark in a short while uh, to get some tips about getting into the professional gaming circuit. But for now, let's see what this week's Intel holds for us. Good news! Details of the latest Clan Wars engagements for Ghosts have been announced. Bad news, they're also the last set of Clan Wars engagements for the season. Boo. For those competing in the bronze to platinum divisions, you can battle for control of Lima in Peru between now and the 21st of July. Anyone mighty enough to hold a diamond division spot can scrap over Manila in the Philippines on July the 19th and 20th. If you're not in a clan, don't fret, you can still join one and get stuck in over the next couple of months. But you'll have to make sure to grab the Call of Duty Ghost app for your smartphone or tablet. If you're completely new to Clan Wars, check out this handy FAQ by following the link on screen now. Um, Mark, even though we're going to talk about this in a bit, uh, the Clan Wars strikes me as something where um, people who are kind of used to public playlists can kind of get used to playing in more of a team environment. Four on four is the kind of usual setup for pro games, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, Four and four is sort of the most skillful teamwork uh, f sort of format. I mean, if you have too many players, it just gets a bit too chaotic. The spawns are very easily influenced and stuff like that. So four is like the perfect mix that you get. Like each player has a role, so it becomes a far more kind of tactical. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mainly, it's, it's positions. Like you mainly holding positions, influencing spawns uh, in your favour. And really, if, if there's any more than that, it just absolute chaos. So there you go, if you've got aspirations to kind of get into esports, Clan Wars seems a very good place to start. And now it's time for a new section we like to call Spectator Mode. Gfinity played host to a major qualifier for its upcoming G3 tournament at their London studio, with teams competing to represent Europe at G3 alongside Epsilon, TCM Gaming, Vitality and Infused. Up-and-coming teams Lightning Pandas, Team Xenex and Exertus battled for the final qualifying spot, all playing each other once to earn a spot in the final. Exertus quickly asserted themselves as favourites, going unbeaten in both bouts, including a staggering 13-2 KD score for Endura during a search and destroy bout against Xenex. With Lightning Pandas eliminated after a 1-3 loss to Xenix, the final bouts are Exertus dominant once more, dropping just a single game before comfortably qualifying for G3. Um, obviously with you being a member of TCM, you're also going to be representing Europe uh, at G3. Did you, did you watch these bouts? Were you kind of surprised by the result? I was watching the whole thing and to be honest, I wasn't really surprised at all. I mean, we've played Exertus a lot online in competitions and they've really looked dominant. Beat, beat the likes of ourselves and Epsilon, who are known as like the household names in, in Europe and the UK. And they've really looked strong. I was expecting them to go into it and win it pretty comfortably, as they did. And uh, they're just, uh, they're an amazing team. They're like, compare them to Germany, who obviously just won the World Cup. I mean, they're just well-rounded. They've all got like a, a Ronaldo or a Messi in their team. Like, they've all got like a standout, amazing player. They're just a strong unit, and that's what I think makes them a great team. Fantastic. So, I mean, your own fortunes aside, I'm guessing you're going to put yourself as favourites. Um, how do you fancy their uh, fortunes throughout the G3 tournament? I'm expecting Zeros to do well. I think they're going to, like, sort of, really upset a lot of American teams. They're not going to really know what to expect, especially in their sort of search and destroy gameplay. That's what they're renowned for, these really audacious and strange search and destroy strategies. And I think that is really something that our team in particular have really um, shown the American teams, but this team again are going to confuse the hell out of So them. an orthodox tactics could win the day. Yep. Fantastic. Um, if you reckon you've got a team that could hold its own against these guys, check out gfinity.net where you'll find details of weekly online tournaments with cash prizes. Uh, and if you're after tips on how to get into the professional gaming circuit, let Heads Up and more accurately Mr. Bryson here be your guide. Right, before we get talking, let's have a short clip of you in action. Two on two now, PD and Marky B versus Sensor and Saints. 
This is absolutely nuts. Just incredibly back and forth right now. Uh, Marky B here outside strip. He's got eyes on him at the stairwell. Not even able to get hit markers. He won't take, won't take three. He but got the kill be in the back, alive. though. Yep. So Sensor, last man standing, has been called out. The pressure on TCM and Sensor pokes. It's TCM with the kill. Marky B in the Remington will send Europe to a top four placement. And as FaZe Black is eliminated, incredible comeback. They were down 5-3. They pulled out with three straight round wins. So that win looked like it meant a lot. Uh, can you tell us a little about the, the circumstances surrounding that, that bout? I mean, going into that sort of match, we went into the, the last day, which is known as Championship Sunday, MLG. No one was really expecting us to go as further than where we were currently, which was top six. Mm. And that game was for top four against one of the best teams in America, FaZe Black. And it went right down to the wire last map. They were actually 5-3 up. And then when you're in a 5-3 like, position, you just have to close out one round to win, win the game, obviously. And uh, we had to win three straight. And what, what we done that, we just pulled out these audacious strategies that we were renowned for and uh, really played with confidence. And it really came down to that sort of clutch situation at the end of the game and I got the final kill and it was honestly one of the best moments of my gaming career as such and uh, it, it felt great. It was more relief than anything. It, it felt like all the sort of pressure of everything just came off my shoulders and I just celebrated, started going crazy, started hugging my teammates. Like I think I threw my headset down, might have broke it <laughs> and, the, and the craziness afterwards. So, I mean, how, how does a boy from Glasgow end up competing in, in Anaheim? I mean, what's, what, was your, what was your path? It was a really, it's a really strange one. I mean, it's like somewhat, somewhat started like seven years ago. I mean, playing at, when I was in high school, playing with like my friends from there. Most of them were better than me at the time. And I just sort of slowly made my way up and like became like the best in that group. And then I got sort of introduced to, to more people, people from like England and stuff. Obviously, I was from Scotland, so all my teammates were Scottish at that point in time. Uh, and then I slowly moved up and uh, got in better and better teams and then ended up in TCM somehow and uh, competing in California, which was an amazing experience. I bet. Um, that moment aside, I mean, what other memorable moments have you had throughout your career so far? The main one for me was uh, g one It was my first uh, event in TCM and we weren't really expected to do good. I, was, I had a lot of pressure on my shoulders. A lot of people said, oh, you shouldn't have picked up Marky B. It wasn't a good pickup. You should have got someone more experienced. And I went into that tournament and proved everyone wrong essentially, got second place which no one was really expecting out of a team from the UK and uh, that's probably one of my favourite moments of the Proving the naysayers wrong, yeah, that's exactly. always a good one. So I mean what tips would you give to someone who's trying to kind of ascend into the professional ranks now, obviously someone who plays a lot of time, puts a lot of time into playing it for fun, I mean what advice would you give to someone who wants to kind of take that to the next level and perhaps start earning from playing? I would say you have to, it, there's a lot of things, that, a lot of elements that come into it but I think the first thing you need to do, the most important thing is find a team with three other players that you enjoy playing with, which is the most important thing because if you go into it and you're, and you're not enjoying playing with certain individuals, you're, you're not going to want to play, you're not going to put in that effort, you're not going to be learning things, you're going to be sitting there frustrated in your bedroom and uh, I would say that's the most important thing, find a team with people you enjoy playing with. Does it at any point feel like you're, you're doing a job rather than kind of uh, playing a game you enjoy? Kind of, I suppose like y there's that sort of like forcing yourself to play aspect sometimes, like you're just forced to play because you want to earn more money or sort of be, be a better player obviously and sometimes you do force yourself into it but there's, that's, there's, there's times where you really do enjoy it and it really is a fun like, sort of thing. It's a hobby at the same time as like a job. So Indeed. Right. Are you ready to go loud? Good because that's next. This week's go loud question is if you were in charge of Advanced Warfare's campaign mode what new features would you implement? Dylan Johnston 5 says, if I was in charge of Advanced Warfare's campaign, I'd add a mission in Italy, in and around the iconic Rome Colosseum. Amazing scenery. Um, historically, beautiful locations in Call of Duty don't tend to stay very beautiful very long. I'm reminded of um, Paris, which I think was in Modern Warfare 3, and the Eiffel Tower kind of spectacularly collapsing. So I'm not sure if he loves Rome, or he basically just wants to see the Colosseum destroyed in an orgy of destruction and violence. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, what would you think about having like national landmarks? As I mean, it'd be it'd be crazy seeing Big Ben like explode and, <laughs> and seeing like I'm, I'm trying to think of some the oh, shard just like collapsing. The Parliament, yeah, <laughs> and ultimately destroying Big Ben. I like the idea. Yeah, of that. yeah. And in psychology, it's just built around 
annihilating historic locations. Yeah, the, they could have like a separate thing, like zombies, like destroying historic locations. They could do it all over the world. You could have the, I don't even know. You could have the Eiffel Tower, obviously, as you said before. Yep. B- Big Ben, like I said. Leaning Tower of Pisa. Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> everything would be destroyed. <laughs> um, a couple of good, uh, kind of similar suggestions along the same lines. Anyway, don't shoot Tani says I would implement a leveling up system and give unlocks for multiplayer for reaching certain levels in single player. Uh, and underling in mine uh, said I would implement more unlocks, progression leveling, customization, and challenges for increased replay value. So. Basically, what they're both saying is like adding incentives to the campaign that would then roll into multiplayer. And I think there are very few multiplayer fanatics who would be able to resist the urge to get all those bonus things in campaign. I think that sounds like a great idea, actually. Like um, me myself, like I don't play too much campaign. Obviously, being a very like multiplayer centric yeah. person, I just play that all the time. But if there was something that I could get, like a gun camo or like a an exoskeleton feature that I could only get through playing a single player mission, uh, that would definitely that would definitely like appeal to me. So basically tying the, the two together yeah. a bit more and making them a bit more of Sounds a, like a, good a idea. feature. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's it for this one. Um, Mark, which of those was your favourite suggestion? Bearing in mind that the winner will get themselves a, a 12 month Xbox Live subscription. Uh, definitely the, the last one that we, we just touched on, the, the idea to implement both the single player and the, the multiplayer together, so you get nice. bonuses through that, that's definitely my favourite. So underling in mind then? Yeah. Nice one. There you go. Well done, you just won yourself a 12-month Xbox Live subscription. Um, if you'd like to be in with a chance of winning one next week, uh, we'd like to hear your thoughts on the following. If you could bring any gun from Call of Duty history into Advanced Warfare's future, what would you choose? Tweet your response at GameSpot using the hashtag AimDown. And we are done for another week. Thank you, Mark, for keeping me company. Um, do you have a Twitch or a Twitter presence that people can keep up to date with you on? I mean, I stream daily on twitch.tv forward slash the B, and you can also follow me on Twitter on TCM underscore Marky B. Awesome. Cheers, Mark. And thanks to you for watching. We should do this again next week. Excellent. See you then. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Pre-order now for Xbox.